Hello and welcome to today's June 22nd daily news report as well as ongoing stimulus check package information video. If you're a subscribed member of my community, then welcome back. And if you're not, consider subscribing right now so I can keep you up to date on what's going on in Washington, D.C., what's going on with the economy, stimulus, money, investing, and more. All right, now don't fall for scammers that are asking you to text about money, investing, crypto, or taxes. They're using my name and my picture to trick you. Don't fall for it. You're smarter than that. Also, make sure to sign up for the giveaway that Casey and I are doing right now. We're giving away over $3,000 in prizes and cash. Uh, there's going to be winners of hats and also winners of $250 to help with groceries, bills, whatever you need to use that money for. I'll leave a link below. All right, I just wanna say before I get started, uh, thank you guys so much for all of the birthday wishes and well wishes yesterday. Uh, it was a great day spent with my family uh, and I appreciate all the likes on the video. So thank you so much. All right, now yesterday was National Child Tax Credit Awareness Day. The head of the Ways and Means Committee called for all members of Congress to get the word out so that families with children age 18 and under know that money is coming. Right now, a very small percentage of Americans even know what the child tax credit monthly stimulus check program is all about. And so they're trying to get the words out, uh, the word out. Uh, Democrats have now again flipped and said, hey, uh, we think that these child tax credits with monthly checks going out should be made permanent uh, for the next couple of years or at least uh, continue being month to month checks versus waiting all year long to receive a lump sum tax credit on your tax filing. Right now, the amount is $300 for children six and under and $250 a month for uh, age six to 17. Senator Josh Hawley wants to see this number go to as high as $1,000 a month. Now, President Biden chimed in on the topic and said, this tax cut will give our nation's hardworking families with children a little more breathing room when it comes to putting food on the table, paying the bills, and making ends meet. Nearly every working family with children is going to feel this tax cut make a difference in their lives. And we need to spread the word so all eligible families get the full credit. Now, uh, I am reading that the monthly checks will not affect your earned income tax credit for lower income families, nor will it affect your ability to get assistance from the SNAP food program. Okay. Now, the, the those that are on SS, SSI, or SSDI that are raising children or grandchildren will also qualify for this program. Uh, even those that are earning zero dollars in income, if you are raising children, you can qualify for this program. There is an income phase out. Uh, 75,000 is the maximum for single filers, 112,500 for head of household, and 150,000 for those filing joint married uh, tax returns. The portal for tax filers has still not been released as of this broadcast. Now, I'll be the first to say this. Uh, this is creating a big divide in the United States right now, as many that are single or that uh, raise children and they've moved out feel like they are being left behind by politicians. Uh, now, these tax credits happen every single year. What has happened is they've increased it and they're releasing it on a monthly basis. But again, those that are single uh, or have already raised children feel that this recovery plan is incredibly unfair. And so it's creating bad feelings. Right now, Senator Bernie Sanders continues to fight for those on SS, SSI, and SSDI. He says the way to get more money to help the poor is to take from the wealthy uh, that benefit from cheap labor and lower taxes. He then cited how Jeff Bezos saw a, an income increase, or excuse me, a net worth increase of over $70 billion during the COVID lockdown, while other Americans were dealing with higher food prices, higher housing, and higher gas prices. Sanders also wants to have the federal government control prescription spending to save Americans about $600 billion in wasted money. 
uh, that could be used towards helping lower income families. Now, last year, uh, Social Security only saw an increase in benefits of 1.5%. While many areas were seeing inflation rise upwards of 7% or higher, uh, the items that saw the biggest jump in price are the items that struggling Americans purchased the most. So again, it feels like a very unfair recovery, right? Now, we are running into issues where the current administration is doing a lot for families raising children, but very little for those that are single or have children that have grown up and moved out. This is where some are saying a fourth stimulus check to a targeted group would help balance the fairness uh, of, of helping those that need uh, recovery uh, assistance. Right now, 80 members of Congress are calling for a fourth stimulus check, seven of which sit on the Ways and Means Committee. And as I told you yesterday, they are gathering data right now as we approach the deadline Nancy Pelosi set of around July 4th to get everything in and to put out a vote. By the way, I want to say thank you guys so much for giving these videos a like. Um, I really appreciate it, and I love bringing you guys the news. I hope you find value in these broadcasts. All right, now I'll be honest. One worry I have about the next stimulus package or the American Families Plan is that Senator Chuck Schumer and Representative Nancy Pelosi have been extremely quiet when it comes to the, to the next stimulus package. Uh, Schumer is very focused on the voting bill and the legalization of marijuana, and Pelosi is very focused on the federal government running future presidential elections. I'll speak more about that in a minute, but I do want to just be upfront with my uh, community it's something that worries me when it comes to uh, stimulus programs and also a forced stimulus check. If the two biggest people in Congress aren't really talking about it, that has me a little bit nervous, and I, I just wanted to be upfront with you about that. Now, yesterday was a good day for energy stocks and overall indexes like the Dow Jones and the S&P 500. One of the energy stocks that I personally own jumped 19% in one day. It was a fantastic <laughs> growth. Um, however, some are saying now may be the time to buy into crypto as crypto over the last week has seen a tremendous drop in value. Uh, those in the crypto space say this baby's about to bounce and head right back up. And so buying right now while it's at a low dip could be a good opportunity. Many YouTubers have been pumping Dogecoin to the moon, but as of yesterday, Dogecoin has been brought back to earth. That crypto coin saw a 36% drop in value just yesterday. So it's down from uh, its highest highs by quite a lot. Uh, the big leaders, Ethereum and Bitcoin, also sustained big losses over the past seven days. But again, some are saying this could be a great time to buy as we may never see these low of levels again. While those that uh, don't believe in the crypto space say it's only going to go lower. So... Uh, the beauty of crypto is it can go up by double digits very, very quickly. The, the downfall of crypto is that it can drop by double digits very, very quickly. So before you put any money in crypto, just know it is a roller coaster that you must be emotionally prepared for. Now, the Supreme Court has ruled that under certain rules and programs, student athletes can be compensated at the university level. These students... Uh, collectively generate billions and billions of dollars in revenue, which stays with the university. Sports coaches right now are the highest paid public employees in the country, while students either get a scholarship, a pro sports contract, or nothing, or maybe just injuries that they take into the rest of their adult life. So they're trying to bring some balance to making sure that uh, these young men and women get some kind of compensation for generating billions of dollars for the university. Now, later today, Jerome Powell of the Federal Reserve will testify before Congress on the time frame the Fed expects to see higher prices and higher uh, than expected inflation uh, return to a more normal level. Many economists are saying we should see prices come back down in the next few months as the supply chain finds a new normal. However, with gas prices rising and a shortage of truck drivers, 
Some worry that food prices will stay higher longer than other areas of the economy. Yesterday, Senator Sheldon Whitehouse got into trouble and was actually trending in the news. He's a progressive Democrat that fights for racial equality, but it was discovered that he is a member of a wealthy beach club for whites only. Senator Whitehouse said that there is diversity and that this has been taken out of context, uh, but hasn't seen the diversity at the club because he doesn't go there very often because he's too busy in Washington, D.C. fighting for equality. So he, he was definitely beat up in the news uh, big time yesterday. Now, let it, later today and tomorrow, the Senate will be voting on Bill H.R. 1, which seeks to shift all voting rights of the presidential election to the federal level versus at the state level. Senator Mitch McConnell said this new policy is flawed and gives the federal government too much power. He will use the filibuster for its intended purpose, which is to make sure that 60 senators want a bill and not just the controlling party. Democrats responded to Mitch McConnell by saying Republicans need to abolish the filibuster and let the controlling party rule the way they want. Democrats will need all 50 leaders and 10 Republicans to pass this bill. It is unlikely any Republicans will vote to give the federal government control over the election process, so it's not expected that this will pass. Over 50 Republican members of Congress have written uh, President Joe Biden a letter begging for him to put someone else in charge of the border crisis. The letter states that little uh, has been done by VP Harris to stop the entrance of illegal immigrants and illegal drugs that are pouring into the country. President Biden, as of right now, has not responded to this letter. This is my update for today. As I know more, I will definitely come on and share more. Before you go, make sure to uh, register your email to be a part of the giveaway that Casey and I are doing with over $3,000 in prizes and cash. We don't sell your email to anybody. It's just used to pick the winner and then they get an email letting them know they've won. And I ask them, hey, what's your PayPal account so I can send that money? So anyway, go check that out. I know that there's still a lot of people in the community that are struggling. All right, now before you go, I just wish to remind you that you are amazing. Never link your self-worth to government policy or else you'll feel really, really bad about yourself. Anyway, I appreciate you being in my community and I'll see you on the next video.